crack a lacking guys, I'm a Dark Quack here and welcome back to another investment video on the channel. So, as you guys probably know, the team of the season is coming towards an end and the last one that we've probably got next Friday coming up is going to be the EA team of the season. So the ultimate, the big one, the huge one. And the problem with this is that, well, there can't be a daily knockout tournament reward unless they choose someone that they believe should have been in one of them from random and release that. And as well as that, what premium SBC can they release? Well, there's a huge option that they just release nothing and that's just the end of them and we had our fun and that's where it stops. But everybody is expecting, and we've been talking about this for a while, a team of the season SBC, where you submit a squad that consists of a couple of team of the season players and hence you get yourself a random team of the season player. Very much like the inform ones they've done for the team of the week, like they did for the one to watch ones at Christmas, etc, etc. So when it comes to this, everybody is talking about investing in the team of the season players, discard team of the season players. Now personally, I don't see any fault in this. Like what is the risk? You pick them up at discard, then worst case scenario, you just end up discarding them. You lose a couple of hundred coins maybe. That is the absolute worst case scenario. But is this making it the best investment on its own? So say the requirements are one team of the season player, X-rated squad, etc, etc. There's so many team of the season players on the market that yes, the demand will be there and they should rise a little bit. But how much do we realistically expect them to rise? So a discard team of the season gold player goes for about 20k, say. Are we expecting that to double in price and have all those discard team of the season players going for 40k? Personally, I think that's a bit of a stretch. I'm expecting somewhere between a five and 10,000 coin increase, maybe a little bit more if the packs are like paying out massively and people love them, but that's kind of where I'm at with it. So what does this mean in terms of investments for us? Well, we've got to be smart here. We've got to always do, this is what I always tell you guys and always make videos about and always emphasize massively. We want to be investing in what nobody else is talking about investing in. So say this SBC does come out like we all expect it to. And the requirements are one, maybe two team of the season players. That's one possible investment. We've just covered that. The other possible investment is going to be the squad rating. Now, we have to be realistic with this. EA can't release an 87, 86 rated squad for a random team of the season player because the chances are you are going to get a discard one. You are most likely going to pick up someone like, I don't know, Fazio opposed to Kuwabali. You're not going to get Mertens, Nangolin in every single pack. It's going to be these guys. It's going to be these discard ones that are going for... Well, he's going for a lot more than I thought he was. So, hey, Fazio, who's going for about 20k. Well, he was going for about 20k. That, you know what I mean, anyway. There's a load of 20k team of the season players. There we go. He is still going for about 20k. So, they're not going to make you fork out an 87, 86, 88 rated squad. And the reason for this is player prices of the likes of Czech, Ozil... Courtois, <clears throat> all those high-rated players, they just go through the roof and the squad builder challenge would massively become unaffordable to most, prices would become way too big and it wouldn't clean up the market. Instead, what I see the most likely outcome of this is an 84 rated squad, maybe 83 rated for the untradable, 84 for the tradable, or 84 for the untradable, 85 for the tradable. Somewhere around that makes a lot more sense to me. Now the huge bonus we have here, if they do release something that it's going to clear up the market, which is what they want. And then I can see them releasing another event, something like they did last time. They've obviously got their awards to release, but something a bit different with like the throwback players or something. That gives them space to have demand from packs, release more SBCs because they've cleaned up the market once more. So what we could be doing is investing in these 84, 83, 85 rated players so that we've got the cards that are needed to go alongside these team of the season players. So what will happen is everybody else will invest in the team of the season cards. Then when they all come to sell them, they'll all hinder each other by undercutting and price cutting each other. And for a while, it will massively reduce profit. But what is going to go up in price are these 83, 84 rated players that nobody is talking about investing in. Hell, you can even invest in the likes of Czech for about 10,000 coins, an 88 rated player. You get two checks for the same price as one team of the season player. I'm pretty sure anyway. Let's just actually double check what he's going for. And then we can just weigh up the options of what kind of rating is going to be best for us to invest in. So yeah, check. You can pick them up for about 10,000 coins. Give or take a couple of hundred, depending on how patient you are. And that gives you an 88 rated card, which is always going to be good for squad builder challenges. The other option that we've got, we can obviously invest in 84 rated players. 
Now, these are a little bit inflated as it is because of the tradable team of the week packs that they released. But you could still pick up 84 rated players for under 3,000 coins. And I could, if they released a team of the season SBC with an 84, 85 rated squad, I could easily see these doubling in value. I find it very unlikely you're going to get double the return on investment with your team of the season players. Maybe about 50%. So raising from twenty to 30,000, whereas these I could see them raising from 3,000 to 6,000 coins quite comfortably. Now, the great thing about these 84 rated players as well is there's minimal risk with them because the team of the week SBC is still going to be available when these end. If you do feel, though, that the SBC, like personally, I believe it's going to be an 84 rated one if they release one. And what's good about that is you could pick up 83 rated players for about 1,500 coins at the moment. Obviously, right. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. Obviously, they changed the formula recently. You used to be able to use a ton of 83 rated players and still get an 84 rated squad. Since they've changed that, it becomes a little bit more difficult to do. So what they've made it now is you need over... Well, it has to round up. It's I'm not even going to go into the formula. It's not even worth it. But what I'm going to show you guys is how easy it is to get an 84 rated squad due to the fact that we're going to be using a big team of the season player anyway. So what we need to do is just jump onto concepts and then literally fill this squad with some 83 rated players. Then we'll add an 88 to it and we'll just see exactly how it changes things. Now the bonus about investing in 83 rated players is you can pick up so many of them. Such little risk involved as well. But if the 83s alongside the 188 or 288 that you need from team of the season give you a squad of 84, 85 rating value, these are going to be the best investment by an absolute mile. Just because they're so cheap, and they could easily raise to about 4,000 coins, which is well over 100. Well, that's, it's not far off a 200% return on investment, which is absolutely massive. Now, I don't think that this is probably, it isn't quite as safe as the team of the season investments in the sense of there's literally no risk with those. You pick them up for discard, you sell them on. If not, you discard them for discard. But the bonus with this is it's outside the box. If we get this right, the potential profit could be absolutely massive. Now, I'm just trying to get back towards the 88 rated players here, just to check that like my math isn't a mile off here. So we throw one 88 rated player into the squad, and we're still on an 83 rated squad. If we throw in, oh, we need to put on back onto goalkeeper. Uh, what am I even doing? If we throw in one more slightly higher rated, like I said, they could be using two team of the season players then we should easily, very comfortably have an 84 rated squad. So if we throw in another 88, we can see it goes up to 84. I want to see if an 87 quite does it. An 87 rated player pushes it up as well. And an 86 rated player still pushes that up. I wonder if an 85 rated player pushes that up. The reason that I'm checking these as well, guys, is because we know just how important your um, 83 rated players are going to be. An 85 rated player pushes that up. I'm just going to check an 84 as well. So, the re yeah, the reason I'm checking this is the amount of 83s we can get away with in the squad depends on how... Well, it's... I can't even get my words out. The amount of 83s that we can use in the squad is completely proportional to just how valuable they're going to be. That's what I was trying to say, but I just couldn't say it for some reason. So, if we needed to still have, say, four players above 83 rated, they wouldn't hold any kind of value. But in this squad, you can see here, we've got one team of the season player and we're picking an 88 rated one because you can pick 88 rated players up for discard. We then have nine 83 rated players and one 84 rated player. If the SBC is an 84 rated SBC, like again, I believe it's going to be an 84 rated SBC if it's released. You guys may completely disagree with me. But if we are right, then these cards here, they have got the most potential to rise. So if we have a look at just a random 83, he's that inform. That's not going to be any good. Let's Perrin, I think, is an inform as well. Let's look at Sommer. That's probably the best one. Look, you can bid on him for about 1,000 coins. And if you're patient, you can pick him up for about 1,200 coins at most. Now, that's the easiest investment. They're not going to massively drop from there because they're always going to be needed 83 plus players. And we can pick up an absolute bunch of them. The other great thing about this potential is everyone can take part in it. Those with a little bit of coins, those with a big amount of coins. Nobody else is talking about investing in the players that you need to go alongside the team of the season players. Everybody's just picking up these team of the season players, 
What we need to be doing, and if you disagree with me here, just use the same kind of logic, but change the numbers. We need to pick up players that will go with the team of the season. If you think it's an 84-rated squad that it's going to be, pick up 83-rated players. If you think it'll be an 85-rated squad, pick up 84-rated players. Either one of those are going to be great investments. If you think it's going to be much higher, pick up players like Czech for 10,000 coins. Every single angle is going to be covered this way, and we're going to make sure that we can make an absolute fortune if and when they do release such an SBC. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video there. I'm sorry I, I rambled in parts there. I was trying to concentrate on finding the right players for the team, and then everything just got messy, so I do apologize about that. But if you did find the video useful and you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like. Comment down below with what you think that the SBC could be or when we might see it released. And subscribe if you're new. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.